sense symbol come from? It's never written explicitly in the Bible itself. Is it in the Talmud? Perhaps. Is there a passage in the Bible about that or no? No. Okay. So you're not really sure exactly where that comes from? No. You got me. Because nobody knows, <laughs> yeah, huh? I don't, know. I don't know. I'm not, yeah. Because I know it's called the Star of David. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with David? No, I don't think so. There must be somewhere, I'm, uh, I uh, do not remember exactly what the association was. Okay. I believe that what they call the Star of David is actually the Star of Remphan. Because when you study the Bible, you'll see that when they worshipped other gods, the Bible talks about them carrying the banner of the star of their god, Remphan. He took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphan, figures which he made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And the star of your god, Remphan. And the star of your god, Remphan. And the star of your god, Remphan. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and Chayun your images, the star of your God which ye made to yourselves, and Chayun your images, the star of your God, and Chayun your images, the star of your God, and Chayun your images, the star of your God. You rejected the God of the Bible. You took up for yourself the star of that's the sixth one star, of your god, called Rimphan or Kiyun. All these were names for Moloch, the great Baal, the great fire god, who was the devil. But you get back to the Masonic fraternity of Freemasonry. Yeah. Their great symbol is G. You, you'll look at the, the star on the compass, which is a stylized star of David. In fact, they have the entire star of David in many Masonic temples. Why is that? Masonry is a study of Judaism and of the Kabbalah. Albert Pike said in his book, Morals and Dogma, that the, the Kabbalah is the very basis. Without the Kabbalah, we would not have the 33 rituals of the Masonic Lodge. But the God they worship, the great architect, is Moloch, the star god. on Saturn, and the hexagon is out. A perfect six-sided hurricane, 60 miles deep, that could swallow four Earths. It's ringed by winds of ammonia and hydrogen blowing 220 miles an hour. The storm was seen by the twin Voyager spacecraft when they passed by in the early 80s. That was the last time until recently that sunlight graced the north pole of Saturn, which takes 30 of our years to make one circuit of the sun. Soon after the Voyagers departed, winter descended. Saturn's rings tipped away from us, plunging the north pole into 15 years of darkness. Without sunlight, astronomers were limited to infrared images. They showed the hexagon was still there, but what is it? The hexagon is a narrow jet stream that circles the North Pole. Researchers think that friction with the slower clouds on either side of it creates eddies, mini storms that push the jet stream into a wave-like shape as it goes around. By spinning columns of water at different speeds, scientists have been able to reproduce the six-sided pattern In January of 2009, the sun began its slow rise in Saturn's north. Summer was coming. The Cassini spacecraft was there to see it. 
In the coming months, Cassini will slip between Saturn and its rings to pass right over the storm for a closer look. But that's not all there is to see up north. Saturn has an aurora, its own version of the northern lights, a ring of electrical fire guided by the planet's magnetic field. Rings of ice and a dancing ribbon of aurora sitting smack on top of a six-sided hurricane. Another jewel in the crown of the solar system's most photogenic planet, where the voyage and the discoveries go on. Before time began, there was the cube. me to show them how the sign of the curse works. So I don't blame it on this, but you go on with it. All right. A master ring to control all others. And into this ring, he poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. One ring to rule them all. was entirely mine. All of it, Kevin! All of it. Mine. 